Good evening, nerd fam, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here at the very last segment of our first day of coverage here at KubeCon North America. Two more days of coverage still to come. My name is Savannah Peterson, here with the one and only Rob Stretche. Rob, what is the coolest thing you saw today that had nothing to do with, that didn't say Kubernetes on it? Oh, that didn't say Kubernetes on it. I'm really throwing you a wild card here on the say, last thing. You, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I like the new project, multi, Multi-Q. Oh, that counts. And it's K-U-E-U-E. -U -E. So it took me a little time to figure out. It's going to take a lot of spell, people a spell, bit of time. Spelling's <laughs> fundamental. With um, you and I being dyslexic right me. now, yes. my brain is already yes. like. Yes, it hurt. I don't it hurt know. to do that. But that was really cool <laughs> about distributing AI out with multiple queues across different clusters and multiple clusters. And the demo that was done was by CERN was fantastic. Oh, I'm going to have to but check that out. I haven't had a chance. It was not technically all Kubernetes. Yeah, no, it's all good. So. I mean, it, it, we're here to celebrate. Every time Kubernetes. I see CERN demo something, I'm always amazed, and then I remember I'm like, oh yeah, like the first web server was at CERN. Like, yeah, well, yeah, they, they have a long history. And of being the colliders and all yeah. the amount of data that they're doing, but. Why don't we welcome him in? I, I was going to welcome him. <laughs> I love that our conversation is already so natural. Morgan's like, what's up? I'm here anyway. Morgan, thank you so much for taking the time to come hang out with thank us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I mean, so speaking of projects, a lot of open telemetry fans yes. in the house. Yep. You are one of the origin minds of that yes. project. Yep. What's going on in open telemetry land right now? Lots. I mean, at the conference, lots going on because we have our own right. fancy project booth. I don't know if you've seen it. I actually went by and was, I, I was very impressed. It's the third time we've done it. It's yeah, it's, it's really, cool. really nice space for the community. But no, there's lots of things happening in OpenTelemetry. It's been now for several years the second largest or second most active CNCF project, Kubernetes, of course, being the biggest one. Uh, but I think in the last year or two, the adoption of the project has really taken off, right? Like, you know, like I, I, I've said this in interviews like this before, but when we started OpenTelemetry, if you told me it would be as widely used across a whole swaths of the market as it is today, I would have been a little skeptical that it would be so rapidly adopted. And yet we see major banks, airlines, like businesses that are only relatively early in their Kubernetes adoption journey, already diving into Otel and adopting it widely, which is very, very exciting for us. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when you look at it, and obviously being from Splunk, and yeah. you, you see a lot in the observability market in general. Yep. Before that, you saw it from the cloud hyperscaler side, same yes. with me, and I, I was- And that's where I was working I, previously, yeah. I was at a different one, but yep. when you start to look at how complicated things are, to me, Otel made a whole ton of sense for, like you're Absolutely. saying, for, because it was easy. Yeah. And, and I think that, mm -hmm. is, has that always really been like kind of one of the design points where you it has been. That, yeah. And I mean, even broader than o Otel is like observability tools, right? Like, you know, web, ser like cloud services, cloud infrastructure, systems like Kubernetes have made it very, very easy for random firms of any size to scale up and build really exciting web services that 15 years ago, you would have had to go buy a data center and staff it in order to, to scale up like that. That's really great. But the challenge is it also induces a ton of complexity mm -hmm. and you need observability tools to analyze that. And to use observability tools, you need to extract the right information out of your infrastructure, out of your services, which is, seems like it should be easy, and yet prior to OpenTelemetry, it wasn't. And, and so that's the real power that OpenTelemetry brings, is you can get the data you need out so you can understand what's going on and how to fix things. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned two things I want to tie together yeah. there a little bit. You mentioned that you've seen really rapid adoption the last year, two, two years, years. in particular, In yeah. particular, that happens to parallel the adoption of a few other things, an acronym a lot of people are talking about, starts with A and then ends with I. Do you think that those things are in parallel? Do you think that the, the things that people are building are more I, complex right now? I mean, those are more complex because Kubernetes itself is so well adopted, because all of these other sort of systems now exist where you can build things at high scale if you choose to and if you need to. And so OpenTelemetry just sort of filled that void of, well, if you build it, you now need to be able to operate it, you now need to be able to extend it, you now need to be able to understand what it is you built, so when your new junior engineers join the team, they like don't have to all bother the same person on a whiteboard to go tell them like how the hundred services work. And as the person who had to draw the whiteboard drawing before any of this stuff existed, I'm you know that, that's sensitive that's, to that's that. That's very yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I feel that. It, as yeah, you're it saying resonates it out loud. with me. And so it's it's critical. And and so no, it, it fills that void that was totally empty. And 
that was in some ways blocking adoption of systems like Kubernetes and others because you could build something that would become unmanageable very, very quickly. So, so I, I think one of the things, and this, this is near and dear to my heart, is kind of the profiling feature that is coming yeah. to Otel and kind of fill people in that aren't as deep into Otel and what that and is. it's the perfect time to. So like, yeah. Like, if you wind the clock way, way back, like before Kubernetes, before cloud services, before any of this, you know, you'd, you'd be running some sort of web service or, or online service that people could access, and you would use logs to analyze it. And probably by like the mid-2000s, even the most relatively green engineer graduating from CS program knew that if you walked into a company and you're trying to run things at some kind of scale, and if they're not even looking at logs, you should probably walk right out the door and find a new job. And that became true of monitoring later over time. Uh, and, and I think distributed tracing we saw with OpenTelemetry, like that really opened that up. And you've seen a proliferation of observability in APM products as a result. That's great. People understand those now. They didn't understand tracing when I started doing this sort of gig, but you know, we, we've changed that. Profiling is one that's very like, I think, extremely powerful, and yet is not that well known. And it, it resonates with me. Like, I, I work at Splunk now, I used to work at Google. Google does system-wide profiling of their entire fleet and they save a lot of money every year by doing this by finding slow code. When I was at Google, we launched what I'm, I think is the world's first distributed profiling product. And amongst our biggest customers, it was very, very successful. They loved it, they could save a ton of money with it, it's great. And since then, various observability vendors, Splunk and various others, have brought out similar features. This is great. But with most of them, all of them, it remains somewhat niche, right? Everyone knows what logging is, everyone knows what monitoring is, everyone knows what tracing is. And you talk about profiling and the only people who sort of know what it is are ones where their bill is like on the order of like $50 million a month for compute. And that always kind of irked me, like I love working on it, like it's really exciting to me, being able to look at your code and actually understand which functions within your code are costing you a ton of money is powerful and it's exciting. It's really powerful. And you can't do it at development time. Like you can profile stuff at development time, but for a large production system, you can never emulate its load properly on a single box yeah. or even run it. And so it gives you insights that you have no other way of capturing really for real workloads and you can save tons of money with it. And it, it, because as an engineer, maybe you wrote something that's slow, you have no way of knowing it. Right. As soon as you get profiling going, you can see it. It's like process mining. This is process yes. mining on the it's Sort of, yeah. I mean, to a degree, like where yeah. it's yeah. very, it was, yeah. It's, 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 it's even deeper. You're actually looking into the actual code and which understanding. Which amazing. I, I'm exaggerating, but it's not line by line, but it's function by function. And yeah. so you see those calls and those call stacks, and you look at a flame graph and you can understand like, wait a second, this thing that says it's using half my CPU, like that's a random regular expression I wrote to like concatenate a few things. Like, I can imagine this illuminates a lot of yeah. easy wins to a yeah. degree where like, you wouldn't have, I think they're NDA, an but like, we have some whatever. customers at Google, some of the biggest ones who saved obscene amounts of money within like an hour or two of looking at a profiler and being like, hey, your profiler's broken. It's, it says that I'm burning like a third of my compute on like this random function, we're like, it's not broken, <laughs> right? They're like, oh boy. But yeah. you have no way of knowing Funny enough, they don't want to be known. <laughs> yes, yeah, fine. <laughs> For writing yeah. bad code. But, but uh, well, it's not bad yeah. code, because like, yeah. you look at it and like anyone could have done it. And yeah. you, know, you could be the best engineer in the world, but if you have no way of knowing, there's literally no signal coming back to you, how would you know? Right. And with Otel, with this coming in, there's numerous benefits, but frankly, I think the biggest one is it'll just go more mainstream. Like more people will be exposed to it, more people will use it. And then I think you'll see profiling analytics get integrated into more and more things, right? Whether it's lower down in the stack where maybe you're in your development environment, maybe you're searching through your source code and it's actually highlighting things saying, eh, this is kind of slow, you should look at this, or other places. But I think you're going to see it proliferate and it's very, very exciting to me. It's very personal. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't tell it all sitting yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, to be clear, there's lots of people working on a profiling in Hotel. I'm sure many of them have similar stories. This is not I'm like- I'm sure they all take it to heart too. <laughs> I, I, like, I've written I, zero I, lines I, of code on this. Like, I, I'm just, I'm just oh. attached to the project. But like, like it's, it's something I've wanted to see become well adopted and mainstream for a very very long time and I'm extremely excited about it. Yeah, is adoption happening fast? Well, not yet, so it's not, it's not finished yet. So, so we passed some major milestones in the project this year, but if you look at the journey of Hotel, like we started with tracing, we delivered metrics two years ago, we delivered logs last year. This is the big year of profiling, probably launch more and more sort of early into next year, but it's the big year where we've been working on it. But it's now part of the spec, you know, getting things in a large open source community like this to become part of the score, core specification takes a lot of time, there's a lot of debate, a lot of opinions. That part is now effectively complete. 
And so now we just need to go finish implementing things. That got a boost, like our friends at Elastic donated their big profiling agent, that was fantastic. Uh, at Splunk, we're donating a lot of the work behind .NET profiling, there's work going on in Java for the other languages. In a few months, you're going to see that actually be usable. I expect adoption to be relatively quick. Like, every time yeah. we've added a new signal to open telemetry, adoption has gone quickly. And that is, in some ways, surprising. Like, o Otel adds a lot of value, and the fact that you get multiple signals coming through the same interface opens up, you know, it's correlations and things that open up even more value. But the challenge with, like, metrics or with logs is that many people are capturing those already through different means. That can slow adoption, and yet it's been quick. With profiling, most people aren't capturing this data. It's relatively new for most organizations. They're not going to have the friction of like, oh, but we use this other thing and now we need to go migrate. It's new, it's easy to use, it's easy to pull in, there's lots of solutions for it. It's going to be pretty exciting. I'm excited now, you've got me pumped, that's yeah. for sure. As yeah. a person who, like, <laughs> I haven't written a lot of code in Hotel, but like writes a lot of code in my spare time, like, it's, it's really nice to have. Yeah, I, yeah. I think, but it, it actually leads back to, and you know, again, uh, like we were talking beforehand, we talked back in February when I was sitting in an airport yeah. and it yeah. just yeah. took us so long yeah. to, to <laughs> nail down the, the talk from the analyst side and get the briefing done. Post acquisition and you know what everything is going on. Now Splunk and App Dynamics are coming together, yeah. and there's a lot of Kubernetes, new Kubernetes uh, innovation and integra integrations going That's on. Correct. Yeah. How? how give us kind of an update on what's going on there, because it would seem like AppD has been around in the APM market for for a long time. A long yeah. time. And yeah, it's so, a very successful business. And, and you yeah. guys have been in there on the security side and observability side. So how, yep. how are things going with that and what new it's, stuff it's is going It's going well out? and it's exciting. So, so as you pointed out, like that's probably the biggest news for Cisco right now or, or for, for Splunk right now is the integration of AppD into Splunk. And so it's, it's part of the Splunk business. It's, it's you know, Splunk App Dynamics. Um, I think there's like a few areas of excitement. I think the big one is that uh, you know, Splunk observability was really aimed, it remains aimed at people running high scale web services, often on Kubernetes. Uh, and so the type of analytics you need to be successful there are usually things where you're looking at the broader view and understanding how a request propagates across your dozens, maybe hundreds of services across Kubernetes clusters and other technologies. AppDynamics is more aimed at like, you know, more typical three tier applications where you've got a client that goes to the edge, that goes to the actual app processing, that goes to a database and back. And as such, AppDynamics has typically needed features where it needs to dive more into the code. I realize we were just talking about profiling, a little different because this is actually tracking individual requests, things like that. Mm. So features like business transactions, snapshots, things like that. There's a lot of power in bringing those capabilities together, both that broader view as well as the ability to dive into like, you know, function by function, like Morgan click this button, here's the exact path of execution that happened. And so there's a lot of work going on right now to bring those app dynamics capabilities to our existing observability customers while still using open telemetry and everything else, and also continuing to invest in app dynamics uh, using whether it's open telemetry or, or other investments where we can expand not just its feature set, but also expand the breadth of languages and, and frameworks and things that it can capture data from. And, and certainly integrating that with the rest of Splunk portfolio. Speaking of data, y'all just released a state of observability report a few weeks yeah. ago. Can you give us some nuggets from that? Yeah, I think, I, I, I always struggle to remember numbers, but I, I think it was like 78% of, um, of IT leaders are, are either using or planning to use open telemetry and seeing value from That's it. That's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. What about market saturation? Yeah, it, it, certainly in terms of mind share. And, and, right, and, mind share saturation, I guess I should it, say, but yeah. Well, and, and as I mentioned earlier, we're seeing yeah. that roll out you know, very, very aggressively across a lot of these organizations. No, it's huge. I mean, it goes back to what I was saying earlier of like, if you told me when we started this project it would be quite so well adopted, I would have been a bit skeptical. And yet, the value that it provides, I think, is reflected in that exact uh, number there, where, where like, these people gain huge value from Otel. And there were some other, other nice nuggets in there about like the power of observability. I think it was like a 2.5x return on investment for investing in observability tools at an organization. Like, no, this is, I think this speaks to the value that people are really getting from these tools. Like, you know, like you know, KubeCon's a pretty serious conference. Most things that are being pitched are actually quite valuable, but in the broader SaaS software space, there's things where if you're a CISO or CTO, you wonder like, this is quite an expensive check to write. I'm actually going to get anything for this. I think with observability solutions, Splunk being, I think, one of the premier ones, 
the, the choice is quite clear, right? Like if you don't have this, you are going to struggle as an organization. You will ship code more slowly, you will have more outages, the outages will be more severe and so on. And the value is very strong. Yeah. yeah. You see that there. Yeah, and it would, it would seem because, in, again, uh, knowing that study, because I've actually uh, read through it multiple times yeah. over multiple years, a lot of people were looking at it and saying, hey, I'm looking to consolidate down the number Correct. of vendors as we well. We see a lot of that. Plat yeah. That would make a lot of sense. Is, is that also helped by the fact that Otel is out there and the fact that you it certainly some standardization hand hand. on that and yeah. things of that Well, nature. it's standardization. I mean, when you think of tool consolidation, there's, there's two huge benefits to open telemetry. The first is you can do it, right? right? Like, Swapping observability tools, or not even swapping, having multiple and going to a smaller set, historically was very challenging. They all had their own agents. And ripping out and replacing those agents was often very expensive, very challenging. Your engineering team had to sit down and deal with it. You know, if you're a decision maker, that's a risky bet to make, especially if it doesn't end up panning out. With OpenTelemetry, you send your data into Otel using, you know, capturing with Otel. You can send it out to all of those tools if you'd like. You could use all of them to their full breadth. It's going to be a little expensive. Right. Uh, but you can also slowly migrate between them. It, it, it makes that transition a lot easier. Secondly, you actually get more value out of your data. When you're using two different tools, like a tracing tool over here and, you know, a metrics one over here, and maybe different parts of your org are using different tracing tools, you're not getting the full picture. Right? If you're using open telemetry, whether you're using one or more tools, you get the full breadth, and secondly, you get all of the sort of correlation between the data. If you have traces that, that are tied to a service that's slow, you look at the spans that are slow, then you can immediately hop to the system metrics and go, oh, okay, like I see the CPU consumption's high, that's why this slowed down, and so on. If you're fragmented between tools across the organization, a lot of those things that seem easy, those connections are very difficult, if not impossible, to make and it takes you hours when something goes wrong. So no, I, I, I do think it's, it's a good point. Like open telemetry has, you know, there's always pressure for tool consolidation. It's the, it's the changing factor. It's not yes. as big a radical change. It's not why they're consolidating, but yeah. it means they can consolidate when they right. want to, which means they want to even more. Absolutely. It's all about choice out there for the community. Yeah. Last question for you, Morgan, because this has been a blast and we look forward to having you on again. Having a beer. Yeah. What do you Just hope to be able to say, next time we have you on the show, let's call it KubeCon London or KubeCon Atlanta, yeah. that I'll you can't yet say today? Oh, I mean, we talked a lot about profiling. I know, so I was almost going to say adoption. you can't say profiling adoption yeah, because so that, I feel like you've said that and I know that's a, touched on that. a deep core principle of yours. I mean, there's uh, there's some minor things like in open telemetry, the project is due for graduation. I, I expect that one of those two KubeCons will be able to announce that. The Hotel Collector is is hitting stability, so all of its like internal APIs, or not internal, the APIs that like, like people in the community use for more add-ons will be locked down so that those won't be changing. That'll, I think, add even more explosive growth to, to, to the usage of the collector. But like, those are relatively small. Like, in terms of the big things I'd want to talk about, or hope to talk about, I mean, outside of open telemetry, it'd probably be the things we were talking about, like Splunk and, and AppDynamics and like, the other capabilities we're bringing to the field uh, with, with like, Splunk observability and AppDynamics. Like, there's a lot of exciting things happening there, happening there that we can't talk about externally a whole lot yet, but hopefully we'll be able to show off uh, in, the, in the coming 12 months. Well, we look forward to hearing all about it and yeah. helping you show off. Morgan, thank you so much for being here with us. Yes, thank you for having me. And Rob, what a great first day. That's been fantastic. I think the, just the collection of people that we've had on that bring the expertise that we've been able to dig into has been fantastic. Yeah, me too. I'm, I, I just love this show. Yeah. And I hope you all love it as much as we do, wherever you might be watching. We're here in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's a wrap on day one of KubeCon North America. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.